Hello, Pastor Steve Waldron here, New Life Pentecostal Church, Albany, Georgia, here today with maybe the best-selling study Bible in America of the past 25 years, and it is the King James Study Bible by Thomas Meltzer. Not to be confused, there's a King James Study Bible by Holman, by Barber, I think somebody else did one, Zondervan does one. But this is the one by Nelson, and it's the second edition. This started out as the Liberty Study Bible, as you may suspect, with those from Liberty University. Then they came out with it as the Annotated Study Bible. It was uh, one of the better-selling study Bibles, even in those days, in the 80s. Incredible genuine leather, large print, enormous amounts of information. And so then they came out the King James Study Bible 2, where they've just added so much stuff in there. So let's look at it. First of all, I do want to say I love the, the gift box. It's kind of a marbled red look. I like the uh, forest green, the wraparound. So it's a, it's a great gift box. And it's leather soft. Now, many people are coming out with imitation leathers. They're not your mama's imitation leather. It used to be an imitation leather Bible would last between a third and a fourth as long as a genuine leather Bible. Modern day imitation leathers are lasting very close to as long as a genuine leather Bible. They're better than most bonded leather Bibles. I like how they did the wraparound with like uh, diamond crosses because it really helps in securing this Bible. They did brown right. Brown is a hit and miss proposition in Bibles. You either do it good or it's terrible. They did it good. It either looks gorgeous or it looks terrible. This looks really good. It has silver edging, which I really love that as well. Some of the blue Bibles will have silver edging, and uh, I really like that. Only one ribbon marker. That's maybe a negative. They do make this in some higher grades. I think I've actually got this in a genuine leather. So it's got, you know, when you open it up, a real nice presented to page in gold, which that's a nice touch. The reason this is currently the best-selling study Bible is I believe it's because it's a perfect storm of size, print size, and information. The print's very good. It's not too big and bulky. And the information is voluminous. It's done very conservatively, extremely conservatively, for the most part. I'm skipping over a bunch of stuff in the front about how to study the Bible, all that kind of stuff. It does have God's answers to our concerns, kind of like that God's Answers by Jack Countryman. I think Nelson bought out Jack Countryman. That's a great little section. has an introduction to the Old Testament. And then for each individual book, it has introductions. A lot of information. And the introductions are in good print. It's good size print. Now I'm going to guess this is 10 point print in here. Um, over 5,700 annotations. It, it's, it's huge. You can see, like here's the uh, outline of the Bible, uh, of, the, of Genesis. This is the text. This is all notes. Now at the bottom, you'll occasionally th see things that are in darker shading. If it has a key, it means it's a doctrinal point. If it has a, a head, it means it's a character study. If it has a shovel, it means it's an archaeological point. And then just annotations outside of that. So just great, great, clear print. It's not real dark. Almost no ghosting. I really like this Bible. And then when you get to the middle, they've tried to just pack this Bible out with things. And so when you get to the middle, I mean Zechariah, Malachi, there we go. Has a tremendous little history. Really recommend people read that of what went on in between the Testaments. Alexander the Great, the Hasmonean period, the Romans taking over. Uh, Israel, those kind of things. has a big section on that, the ascetic community, how did the Pharisees arise, the writing of the Apocrypha, when did that all take place. Real good harmony of the Gospels, instead of being at the back, it's in the middle. And then you start out with the New Testament. It has, and it is a red letter edition, introduction to the New Testament, very 
as I would say, smartly done in more ways than one. And then you have uh, Matthew. And again, I just want to show you, it is center column reference. They have this size print. It's amazing it's got center column reference. And we've checked out these references. They're great. They're references I've never seen anywhere else. Also, archaic words are defined in the center. Alternate translations kind of in the center, for those of you that are interested in that. So just, it's really good. And the center reference is a real small print, like in some Bibles. And then when you get to the back, wow, wow. When you get to the back, it's got some stuff. A topical index to Christ and the gospel. So in the top, like if you want to look up the term baptism, it's got all the places. It's top of ask, seek, not, teaching the Beatitudes, disciples, denying ourselves, giving, gate, Messiah, life, loss, teachings and illustrations of Jesus Christ. Another great section, topically done. Like if you ever wonder, what did Jesus say about this? Well, even if the word's not mentioned, the topic is, you know, so many times. And so you can look it up here. And so just tremendous. And again, great print. I can't emphasize that enough. It's got an excellent thing on the parables of Christ, the Messianic prophecies, Paul and his letters. Uh, it's a topical index. You almost never see this in any other Bible. Like, you look up Adam. Where is Adam mentioned in Paul's letters? That's valuable. Where's Apollos mentioned in Paul's letter? Antioch Pisidia. And then it will have it. Uh, circumcision, collection, comfort, the coming of the Lord. And so, index to Paul. Then, an index to end time prophecies here. Where do you find the 144,000? It tells you. Where did you find Apollyon at? It tells you. So a tremendous, if you want to do a scriptural study on the end time, it's tough to beat. So this has a lot of unique features that I just personally haven't seen in any other Bibles. I'm not saying they're not in any other Bibles. Um, but I haven't seen them. Promises and rewards to victors. The crown of life, the crown of glory, the crown of righteousness. Dressed in white. Eat of the hid man. On and on. Signs of the time. Acceptance of immoral behavior. Matthew 24, 12. Luke 17, 20, 16, 30. 2 Peter 2, 5 through 8. Arrogance and godlessness. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. Betrayals and hatred, Matthew 24, 10, Mark. It, it just explosion of knowledge, freedom to travel. False messiahs abound, false prophets. So signs of the times has all that. What believers should do in the meantime, be patient, be ready, be prayerful, be sober, be watchful, don't be judgmental, don't stop meeting with other believers, endure, exhort, maintain a pure life, remember Christ's death by taking communion, resist the devil, share good news, so does the Spirit. Wait expectantly. That's invaluable stuff right there. Monies and weights and measures. All the prayers of the Bible. You know, Abijah's army. Habakkuk's prayer for deliverance, for justice. Isaac's prayer. On and on and so forth. Then an index to the annotations. So this helps tie together the notes. The notes aren't just drifting by themselves. But then you have the advocacy of Christ. You see, it says go to 1 John 2.1 or page 1881, then you can see that. Um, Antioch of Pisidia, Acts 11, 19 and 26, or page 1624. So it's going to tell you about Antioch of Pisidia. Great. So many Bibles don't do that. They just give you the commentary. But they don't tell you how to find what's in the commentary. This helps you. Instead of you trying to find everything, you look to the back, go to the subject, and then you can go to the page in the Scripture. And then the concordance is extraordinarily unique. What is unique about this is it's not just a concordance. First of all, it's large print. Not real large, but for concordance, it's extraordinarily large. Second of all, it's got Strong's and Vine's definitions in the concordance. Never seen another Bible like that. No, I've seen Spiro Zodiati's Hebrew and Greek study Bible understand all that. But just to have it in the concordance, tremendous to combine it. We'll be doing a video, Lord willing, if the Lord wills and directs on the Hebrew Greek Key Study Bible. And uh, the maps are okay. Their maps are basic. The maps are colorful. 
to me, there's just something kind of missing about the maps. But I mean, they're they're good. I don't know why I think there's something missing. It may just be me. They just seem to have cheaply done, but when you go to the information, it's fantastic. Now, one thing it doesn't have, it's not going to give you a lot of pages to write your own notes in here. Like one. In the back. This leather soft cover, I mean, you can almost do it like a local church Bible. It's that good, the leather soft. If this wasn't cardboard, if this was like inside was bonded leather or leather lined, you probably could do it like a local church. Fantastic Bible. Encourage it. Get one. Excellent. Let me let me read to you one commentary. Uh, like Deuteronomy 22.5. Deuteronomy 22.5. From us good Pentecostal and holiness people. This is Genesis. I mean, this is Deuteronomy 22.5. This is the 11th subsection. The law of transvestism. This passage clearly teaches the importance of maintaining a proper distinction between the sexes. The lack of which which is an abomination unto the Lord thy God, all bolded in caps, because it's quoting scripture. This warning does not refer merely to clothing styles, but to that which pertaineth unto a man, that is a man's things. This prohibition included clothing that was distinctively masculine in ornamentation, as well as other ornaments, weapons, or items distinctively associated with men. The prohibition is against transvestism, that, which was often associated with homosexuality and fertility rights. Very strong. Very strong. So God bless you. The King James Study Bible, second edition by Thomas Nelson in Leather Song. God bless you today.